and ultimately they lost that best of five grand final. So with nothing else to show throughout the year, maybe, just maybe, They've got some surprises waiting in store for Lost One, who have played it an absolute bucket load, including back at the Charlotte Major when they were known as Team One. Most recently, as part of the closed qualifiers, they beat Six Karma here, seven and five. They're actually on a four game win streak on this map overall. So maybe looking at it on the stats side of things, the paper says Lost One will come out the victor. But again, Astralis, I'm sure, have got something spicy in the wings waiting for us. Well, this is, you know, how many times do we say it? Every team needs to be able to play clubhouse. You know, there's no point just not being able to play clubhouse. It's you know it's pretty much at the minute in the in the competitive map pool the default map. Um, so yeah, I'd expect Astralis to at least have have a game here. They can't yeah. you know turn up and, and not have anything. The fact that they haven't played it like you say maybe you know is an advantage to them. It's going to be more difficult for Lost One to prepare if they've been putting some work in in the background so that they've got um, you know a, at least a competent clubhouse to play. Uh, they could have a few surprises in store for Lost One. Whereas by contrast, Lost One have got a lot of info out there, a lot of that could have been watched, a lot of preparation that could have been done. So Lost One maybe Slings needed to around about, so. switch things up a little bit. You know, they might need to, to do things a little bit differently because they could be sort of, uh, you know, preparing to walk into uh, being counter stratted Swings and roundabouts, Tim, at the end of the day, isn't it? When it gets into the server, anything can happen, as we all know and love. Church Arsenal, where we're going to start off the defensive side of things for Lost One. Nothing really too flash about their lineup, but I think based on the operators that you can see, you're probably going to have Lobin and Maya getting busy out around the map, as they have been for the longest time. And I actually love how even in the interview, when we had on the very first day all these team intros, where we'd had Demo sit down and speak to all the players and get some info out of them, Lobin even said, you ain't ready for me and Maya as a pairing. We are going to give you some hurt, and so far, hurt is exactly what they have been doling out. And I almost feel like Dash and Dots as a pairing, they came from the same team together. They know each other, which kind of leaves poor Rise as the outcast, but quite quietly over the last few days, he has been going about his business and putting up some really big numbers in some of the series. Round one then. Here we go. Last one, they start on the defense. It's going to be Church and Arsenal. They're downstairs. They've gone for the triple reinforced. We've seen a lot of teams just going for the double reinforced lately, leaving the wall closest to Moto um, soft so that they can peek through into that side. It's a risk and reward. You know, it works both ways, as Emzo famously said. Um, you know, they certainly do work both ways, angles like that, and we have seen kills going either direction. The one thing that we have learned, there's the one thing that we've really learned is what do you not try to do over church wall throw grenades over it Tim don't throw grenades over there does who was it who learned that Brixer Brixer <laughs> when he tried to nade over it and team killed two players in short when <laughs> it's it bounced back unexpected to be fair I'm not just making fun of Grixer he did put a tweet out himself with the, the two bodies on the ground saying um, that he'd learnt not to do that so. yeah and to be fair to, I didn't know that you couldn't it's, do it it's, like, it's one of them things it's just I think um, when the wall is shot out across the top there's like a bit of a bar there um, and it tends to just bounce well I asked Fresh because obviously he's a ranked demon who does nothing else to do with his life and he's obviously played this map an awful lot and he said oh it's when you reinforce it on a certain side you yeah. can't nade over it on the other you can but I was just so used to seeing C4s flying over it for example that I thought look if a C4 can fit over it surely a grenade can but again it comes down to which side has been reinforced out. Yes. Forrest getting to work here back onto his old roots playing a supportive operator for the team. Nice bit of rotation coming in across different maps here but we'll be into this classic two for two for two for two for two for two for two, for two on the Havana to ensure this definitely gets opened up. A little bit of time being wasted by a lost one, but I think they realise at this point they are not going to be able to keep this hatch closed, no matter how much they may try, and they are now out of impact nades. No, that's it, but it's about burning as much utility as you can. To be fair, there's no real hard breach options. The, um, the book has used both hard breach gadgets, so it is down to the barn. So, for example, if they wanted to come and try and open triple wall at the bottom of uh, main stairs, it might now actually be a little bit of a difficulty. Only six pellets remaining for the Habana. Um, they might have to start making choices here. Lobin, he's going to make a choice. He's going to take a choice to take Forrest out of the round, Jane. I know manages to find Maya dots onto Iconic, and this is going backwards and forwards, Jane. I know is the, the hero for Astralis at the minute with the double shuttle gets in on the action though Hello. taking down Rise and that leaves us now in a one versus three shuttle with the second on the round and Spiff it is to finish things off and, and characteristic to be fair late round flurry down in Church and Arsenal sees Astralis take round one real back and forth round as we're so used to seeing throughout this series Lobin there for a second, I was like, how long do you want to look at the book for, mate? Are you admiring his wonderful beard? Maybe the hat? I don't know.
but he did let him get a little bit too safely in towards sight there behind the bomb chassis and ultimately lost out that one versus one. Good first round for Astralis has also broken up one of the harder to attack sites down in the basement. Now we move up to gym and bedroom, lost one, not wanting to dwell on past mistakes for too long. Want to move away from church and arsenal and instead take us upstairs. Gym and bedroom, it will be the question always on this site is where will the push come from? Are the attackers going to work in from the east side? Are they going to just work purely from the west? Maybe a bit of logistics. Uh, there's plenty of options for them. Um, Meyer at the minute is reinforcing off the east side. Um, so they're going to be setting up here, Lost One, to try and hold on to cash. And it looks like CCTV as well, to a degree. Um, we're going to have reinforcement out into garage. So maybe somebody playing on the catwalk with the option to play back into CCTV. We'll see just exactly how that develops. Rise has dipped himself away, but I'm just interested to see exactly um, what plays out. I think maybe just cutting out the long angle from Garage as well. Um, you can shoot out that soft wall from Catwalk Stairs and get a long angle through in towards Cash. So um, maybe just preventing that. Absolutely so well. Nice and slow to start things out. <laughs> I think it's just like, okay, I know that there's a Solus lurking around. I don't want to be here for too long. Dash pops on that gadget. No doubt he'll spot one of these drones that are out behind him. But just, I think Conscious are being pressed out at this point. Taking out another one of those drones, though. Only one still out on the field here for Astralis. Six in back pocket. Here we go with the start of the east side push across, getting this wall opened up to expose the west CC window, which is so valuable in being able to assault onto any attackers who are making use of this south balcony. Nobody's really pushing into the east side at the minute. Forrest has gone in that direction, but has diffuser in hand, so I don't think that's likely to happen. Um, so the, whilst they've used the Selma charge to, to open it up and create a little bit of fear for the team of Lost One in playing in CCTV, there's no actual deterrent there at the minute. Um, so Rise, he's still out in garage. He, as soon as he knows that nobody's pushing him, he can easily play inside a CCTV with a, at least a little bit of confidence and play onto those south side windows and prevent Astralis from doing so. It depends if they read into this here. If they start hearing enough movement coming out of Astralis, i.e. the number of guns, the amount of utility coming through, they'll know that you can play on the balcony and make it work against Astralis. But for now, though, Astralis are counting very much blind on them being able to get away with this. They'll know that I spotted a few. I don't think they 100% know where Iconic is, but as soon as they get a sniff of him, I think they'll know that Ryze can then start to make a move, and hopefully that nade is a little bit of a giveaway. Yep, unsuccessful nade coming in there for Iconic, trying to do some damage to the feet, but won't find any. Um, still going to be in and around kitchen. Spiff working with the verticality up through the hatch as well. But uh, you feel like Lost One are reasonably comfortable here. Lobin's going to take down Forrest with a beautiful head shot there. Jay 9 0 has got the bathroom wall open, trying to just make a peek inside to sight, but can't quite see it to um, get an angle in there. And he's just afraid of the top of the stairs. Shuttle does find Mayor. Jay 9 0 slays from far away. Oh! AK, but Iconic is going to take Spiff down, and that could be the right. It's three versus two now for Lost One, and make that two versus one as kills continue to rain. J90 is left all alive here, all alone here. Sorry, he's indeed alive, but against two players on the side of Lost One. Rise and Dots, the last one's left standing. Needs to recover that diffuser that's still outside the building. So they're going to have to scramble to do this, and it feels really there like you saw that team kill coming in slow motion. You saw the Yana enter from stage left, and we all know what happened next. J90 though, going to see if he can try and bait this out, but he needs to go for a kill, I feel, onto at least one of them. In a two versus one when he's got to get a plant down, he's got no hope in hell. Going to round himself here in towards Lodgy, looking down towards Destruction. Takes a couple of shots, going to move himself away. No swing coming in from Lost One, playing this so patiently, bringing a shot out and just reminding him you have not got a chance in hell. Finds one, is going to try and stick this diffuser. Down comes Rise as well to close things out, and J90 should not be able to get this finished out. There we go, Lost One taking round two. And just as with the last two maps, Tim, the first two rounds of any map have gone to one to one side, one to the other in very different fashions. Last one there. I think, uh, you know, for me, Astralis, I want to see them apply a little bit more pressure to that east side. Mm. Rise ultimately was the one left alive to be able to come in and get that final kill. There was just no pressure in Garage, no pressure in CCTV. They tried to apply that sort of ghost or phantom pressure by opening the wall up with the Selma charge on the way past Jane. I know did that and then off to Jacuzzi wall he went, but it just wasn't sufficient ultimately um, because after 30 seconds, Rise is stood there thinking, nobody's pushing in here. Well, nope. I don't need to go anywhere. Nope. You know, as long as, as soon as he recognizes that, it, it's just a waste of time. So for me, take take the space, take the control, leave one person in there and make sure that you've got that control. Okay.
Okie dokie, back down to the base when we go. So, last one, not wanting to rotate them onto an off-site. Cash CC has always been seen a bit of a, a black sheep of the family of sites on this map. Maybe more recently than, well, not so much recently, in the last year, I'd say it's probably gone that way before. It used to be the primary back in the old days. And then the other off-site is bar and stage that some teams still don't feel 100% confident playing. So really, there are two sites that you're happy to play, two that you're happy not to. So given the choice to rotate in your third site back over to one of those two, you're absolutely going to take the chance, and that is what Lost One have gone for here. Jenna just being conscious of any potential peaks coming out. Doesn't want to be giving up anything too soon. And he wasn't a million miles away from right as Rise was up there. Going to apply the keeper barricade to the window. Just going to allow him to continue playing his position on blue stairs. Defending this time down in Church and Arsenal, of course. They're going to give it another go. It didn't really work out in round one. It just, it was absolute chaos, to be fair. Um, it was just all about everybody dashing into sight and a lot of gunfights all at once very quickly. Um, and Astralis coming out on top of it. Now, I don't know if that's that's going to be the case again or whether it's going to be a slightly more metered approach this time but um, Lost One playing it fairly similarly they've got everybody down on site so they're giving map control over to Astralis and giving them an awful lot of time to work with gonna go back to this classic rotation with the Xkairos as well there are four sets of impacts on side for Lost One I'm gonna try and bait out another one here nope straight off and then two more come up and we keep on going through this rotation until Lost One run out of impacts I remember when this change came through for Hibana. Remember before she used to always have to use six at the same time? It's probably a couple of years ago now she got given the ability to rotate between two, four, or six. But it does make these kind of things you know, very easy for Hibana to slowly chew through. Ubi declaring they wanted her to be the Queen of Hatches. I feel that's kind of done its job, Tim. It certainly is. Um, we're going to have the entry kill coming in. Maya takes down J9. Oh, um, it's only the Ash that's been lost, so not the end of the world for Astralis. It's more of a numbers issue uh, rather than anything else. Um, Iconic just looking to dump nades. Great item. Oh, oh. So close. The uh, ADS had been disabled. Oh, the drop, the drop. Going to be coming in through Moto. Spiff maybe finding one. Can't quite find his shots oh onto Maya. That's unfortunate. On a different day, that goes a different way. Dots manages to find Spiff. Iconic onto Maya. Now in a four versus three in favour of Lost One. But here come Astralis. You see the power of those Kiva barricades coming through there, keeping them both alive on sight. Lobing down onto the ground like an absolute rat. Gets himself to rise for the close. And it's hip early here. Lost One to pull ahead first. Two defensive rounds in a row then and lost one managing to get themselves the lead after a little bit of a shaky start to begin with off site there's a problem now though Tim they've got to choose one of those less than desirable sites which gives Astralis a chance to pull things up to two and two would not be surprised to see these three three halves just keep on raining through but I've got to say again it's a great little bit of team play once again coming out of Astralis very cute to, imp uh, to EMP off the ADS get a nade down there to force them back into sight and whilst they were distracted looking in towards blue expecting a drop to come in in fact the drop comes in on the other side it's Moto only saved by the keeper barriers and lost one find the kills that they so sorely needed to close that round out convincingly here we go then let's see how they set up when it comes to cash and CC uh, yeah, I'm not too surprised to see them go to cash and CCTV. Bar and stage is still, I think, you know, the, the, the less popular site, if you will. Um, and also, just the way that, you know, maybe there's a little bit of a nod into the fact that Astralis just didn't push this side of the map at all for the gym um, and bedroom attack. You know, maybe just suggesting, look, they, you know, um, they haven't shown us anything to be afraid of just yet. That's a stat and a half. Cash and CC is the least popular site at 12 rounds played across 10 games, but its defensive win rate is 92%. That means it's only been lost once out of the 12 times that we have seen it played. A lost one going to help that stack closer towards 100 to make sure it stays very defender sided, or is it going to slowly slip towards letting the attackers back in? We'll find out. I feel like it's a site that's getting uh, a bit of a bad reputation sometimes. Obviously, it became very easy to open the wall, um, and in tandem with that, we saw its pick rate drop away. Um, we saw it come to be much more of a 50 50 site, really. Um, but, you know, given, given the right tools, given the right method, it is still um, definitely defensible. We see, um, you know, not, not a terrible win rate on there, as you've said, certainly here at the Invitational it's going well so far um, and it, that could be down to teams you know not stopping practicing attacking it but um, you know maybe not putting the the same kind of work into it I think it's changed a lot in terms of how teams do attack as you say right like we've seen a lot of teams rotate off towards construction side we haven't seen the classic you know open east breach move over towards garage force a player out with capital for example which is what they've got here and then look for a planting behind the server stack it just hasn't happened all that often so maybe here we're going to see that kind of back to the roots of this side 
title match rather than the different stuff we've seen teams trying to do. Just keep it plain and simple. There's a reason why it works so much in the past. Azami and Solis have really helped this site. Um, Massively, by, yeah. You've got Azami to help garage catwalk, and then you've got Solis who can play underneath for denial. Um, oh my you God. know, so I think that has really helped. We're going to have the opener coming out. Raz is going to be taken down in a quick trade. It's the Capitao that's gone. So that's a big loss of utility. But um, by contrast to that, Solis goes, and that is that vertical denial taken out as well. Um, we've got the Wamai still holding on to garage. That is something for loss one at least, but J9 not anymore. Not anymore. He's stood inside of sight and just cutting down everybody. One versus three and Dots is up against it with a minute ten to go. A lot of work to do here. One coming inside our construction site, taken down. There's a second one there that Dots was not aware of. Where's he going to come from? Towards the right, towards the left. Super shorty, not really the gun you want for this. Changed at the wrong time, but doesn't go down for it. Gets pushed on both sides. Astralis with a fantastic pinch. Brings us back to two and two. See, J9 had the answer there. Don't worry about taking garage. Don't worry about the uh, denial from just below. Walk inside. Just walk into the middle of sight through the breach and kill three people. Easy. I'll take that one into my right. What's the problem? I, I can't believe you got in there so undisturbed. You know, normally you'd get spotted mm. by the catwalk player and you march through to that point of sight, but clearly it slipped through the net at least for half a second or so and was enough to deal a bit of a death blow onto the side of Lost One. All things kept yeah, square at two and two, Tim. These two teams stay neck and neck throughout the entire series so far. Honestly, it's going to go all the way. I'll tell you now, it's going to go to overtime. I said it before we started, 40 plus rounds and <laughs> I, I, I still have said, I've said nothing to convince me otherwise, put it that way. The Van Medics tunes in going, yeah, yeah, we know, Tim, shut up. <laughs> uh, Old, angry man. I, I obviously just like... You didn't say those words, I said those. I know you did, Des. You always... I just thought I'd have it on. You always do. Uh, right, Jim and Bedroom, we're going to be going back to... We saw this back in round two. Uh, it was a successful round for Lost One on the defence. Um, they've then moved through Church and Arsenal CCTV, and they're going to go back to this position. To be fair, we must remember, this did come down to a 1v1. Um, it was in the nick of time, so Astralis didn't really have a realistic opportunity of winning it. Um, but what would I like to see different? I would like to see a little bit more attention towards the east side. Garage and CCTV. Rise was allowed to play in there for free the entire round, and then he was able to come back in towards the end um, and offer quite a big support to, to what was going on inside the site. So don't just open the wall this time. Let's have somebody go in there, clear that area out. I've been really interested watching lost one across these rounds not really bring mutes you know on this map most teams will play mute in their composition because there are lots of single doorways lots of places that you can place down the mute jammers that will catch drones on their way through the map it's why the ssg roam where you bring the mute the multi and the vigil is such a popular strategy or at least was up to a couple of years ago these days there are many different variations of it but really what they've gone towards uh taking is more the approach of the best offense or best defense is a good offense they get the solas on side they go and hunt down the drones rather than worrying about letting them get caught up in jammers or captured by pests, for example. So it's a little bit of a change. It is working for them, but just an interesting observation I had. Logistics hatch is going to be opened up. So basically the usuals are going on. We've go. got Spiff heading up red stairs. This is what I wanted to see. Um, on the knock, but he's going to get smashed from Garage Still to begin with. It. But look at that. Just moves through and absolutely removes Dots from the game. Lobin Meyer also taken down along the way. Forrest is planting great attack okay. from Astralis. Flawless round. They don't even have time to get the diffuser down. What an adaptation coming in there. They had the east side pressure. They they got themselves into sight. Love it, Astralis. The nook there was basically the cat amongst the pigeons. Really set things in motion as again the defenders start panicking and like dominoes they fall one after the other all spinning round trying to take different gunfights and being pushed from off angles. Really good communication once again from Astralis so to all make a move at the same time. Downstairs we go into the basement then. Clearly now done with playing up on the top floor. Astralis have got what they were looking for. Three rounds on the attack inside. Lost one here. Do not want to let this go to four and two. You want that three three split that we've seen throughout the series so far. You know, you'd be kicking yourself if you let this one go too heavily across towards the attacker side. You would. It's Church and Arsenal. 50-50 uh, so far for um, Lost one. They can improve that to a 66% win rate if they pick up this round. Um, last time around, we saw it back in round three. Um, and it was a better defence. The Turtle up they didn't really have any presence out in the map the oryx suggests that maybe they're going to do things a little bit differently this time um, because they have been playing pretty much on site and giving full access to the map full control of the map to astralis 
this from the very off. Uh, they came under pressure inside of sight, uh, but there was a couple of good gunfights that were won by Lost One that were the, the turning of the tide, really, um, and Astralis unable to, to get that done. But I think this time we're going to see a bit of presence out in the map and a little bit more aggression from Lost One, and I'd like to see that. But it looks like Astralis are not messing about, but they're going to be shut down immediately, Des. Forrest trying to creep his way into strip there, and Lobin strips him of his life and sits him down, and that's going to be advantage with Diffuser down. Lobin's 4-0 on entry on this map as well. Absolutely decimating Astralis in the early round. In fact, round five, the one that we just saw Astralis win, is the first time they got the entry kill. He's finding his feet, shooting those toes. We all love a few toe shots, but not enough to finish him off. Shuttle going to step away. Definitely kissing those toes better later. Damn, down to 25 HP. Shuttle very unsure. Um, sorry, not Shuttle. It's Spiff that's very unsure about going in for this diffuser. Having been downed, it's you know almost certain that they're aware of it, which they are. Um, but Warbin's actually moved away at the minute. He's just again just trying to be a nightmare inside a strip here and they're just not moving him RH said managing to get a trade onto J90 who found a kill onto Maya and that leaves us now in a four versus three advantage loss one slowly stepping forward here Astralis trying not to find themselves picked off one at a time when you've got four players still left on the other team that feels like the inevitable here we've got Shuttle trying to work his way in through the main bar, joined up by Spiff as well. I like the playing together on this one. Also, you've got Iconic playing a little more solo right now out towards the kitchen side of things. They've got themselves in the bar and expect that they know this player is still sat around Strip and they've got to push on to him. Here we go, the full rotation from the whole team out here to hunt down Lobin and hopefully put him in the ground. Well, the problem is they still don't have the diffuser. Um, there's a minute 15 left in the round and they still haven't got it. Lobin's going to get another one here, I tell you now. Ooh, Spiff I'll managing I'll to just duck too. and yeah. weave. I didn't, I didn't account for the skill that uh, Spiff's been showing us all day, to be fair. Just duck and weave. It was a close fought. I forgot that he's a pro player and has got a lot of skill. He's only got about 15, 20 health left, but fantastic movement there to get that kill done. That was, that was very nice from Spiff. But look at him. Look at Shuttle. Looking at the numbers, though, we all know headshots can make things change very, very quickly. 45 seconds to play, and they're going to try and force their way down main stairs, it looks like here. Shuttle. Ripping up the floor, doing a few renovations on here to at least make it easier to work your way down main stairs to ensure there are no nasty surprises waiting. The difficulty they've got is they've got to push in through three smoke canisters here. And I think it's a good read that they know they won't be able to make this work trying to wait for those to all time out. So instead they're going to rotate away and look for a different angle in. Spiff has got himself inside a mortal. Iconic is the worst one they could have lost. He was the only one on full health. They've now got two very low HP points. Oh, terrible timing. Out comes the toxic babe canister, though, but it's Rise who manages to find Spiff, who was quite rightly running away from the gas. And that leaves us 3 3 as the final kill comes in at the bottom of main stairs. And lost one. Get it done in Church and Arsenal. Up to three and three. That perfect half we wanted to see, Tim. Absolutely love it. And we get to see how Astralis fell on the defensive side. Again, as a reminder, they've only played this map once in the last year. I only saw it at the Charlotte Major where they lost to Dark Zero. Interestingly, lost one back when they were Team 1. Also lost to Dark Zero on this map at the Charlotte Major. Feels like everyone lost to Dark Zero. Unsurprising because they went on to win the whole thing. Both of these teams looking to show what they can do on this map because I think the best thing for Astralis really is it was a permaban for them. They haven't played it again all year except for that one time. It was considered to be their worst preferred map. They would always ban it away. If coming out of the group stage here they can say, oh actually we can play Clubhouse. Suddenly all those teams that have been prepping for Astralis, expecting them to be there in the next stage, have got one more map they've got to worry about. It's a great tool to have and a great asset coming into the playoffs next week. We've got the Solis on side once again, Jane I know this time. The Solis has certainly um, been played by quite a few different people. Spiff, Jane I know, Iconic all um, at points picking up the operator, going drone hunting, trying to pick up those electronics. Um, and the pick rate here at Invitational for Solis must be uh, immediately quite high as well, which is no surprise. Um, we've seen her power and ability to dominate rounds very oppressive um, at times. But we've got Shuttle looking to play an aggressive Kaid on to the breach, just looking to potentially try and trick. Now, the Orsa on side for the attackers is always an interesting one. What we we'll usually see is Maya get up here and put a couple of those shields down so that they can play behind them on the breach and just get a little bit more aggressive once it's opened. I was curious to see exactly what her presence has been. She's the third highest presence. The Zami has been top, then Valkyrie, then Solus. And that's an overall presence, so combining both ban rate and pick rate together. So right up there into the top three. The next one is Mute on quite a drop-off, to be honest with you. Not banned once, but picked an awful lot. So 100% making herself known here at SI. 
Spiff is going to be in position on the garage catwalk, important position, um, and I think the right person to try and keep hold of it. Spiff having a, a great tournament and a great game so far today, um, really hitting some great shots. So going to be holding on to that catwalk for as long as possible. Breach is open, May manages to find Forrest, and Forrest having a torrid time in the entry to say how well he went in the last map. And that leaves us in a five versus four. Lost one are going pretty well here on this attack. They've got some good progress so far. Next step they need to clear garage if they're looking to get in and get a plant behind server or alternatively start pushing themselves into construction. Yeah, it tells you a lot when Loban's 4-0 on entry and Forrest is down to being 0 and 4. As much as I was praising him in the previous maps about how much work he's done in the NAL, lap, well, this year, I guess, in the 2022 season. It is quite painful to see it coming down to this on such an important map, but his team has still held him in there. And to be fair, when he hasn't been the entry death, he has really had quite an impact in the game, so it's about staying alive longer. Lobin pushing down main stairs here. They don't know who's coming in behind by the looks of it. Will catch himself a freebie here onto Jay I know who's looking completely the wrong way. That's too easy, but I think it might just give him a little bit of false confidence there because he's got his man, but Iconic was the second line of defense, and he's going to be creeping his way up main stairs potentially here. He's just making sure he's not being pushed, but keep a close eye on Iconic because late in the round, he might just have an important flank that he can pull off. Flash is coming in, hop straight over and looking for the kill, but again, some good team play coming out of Lost One. The two players stacking up together to bring down yet another member. It's a 5v2. What a start to the attacking half for Lost One. Now looking to hunt down these last two. There we go, Lobin finding one, just waiting for Iconic to appear. Sure enough, down he goes. I feel like if Iconic, if Iconic goes straight into Master there, maybe he gets the kill onto Lobin. I think Lobin maybe heard him tracking across into logistics, um, hence the, the wheel around for the kill. Uh, but that's going to give Lost One the advantage. 4-3 on the scoreboard now, and a much better half from them. Because much better round, rather, sorry. Much better defense. Yeah, NA Esports account for, uh, well... Esports and A, I guess, for Rainbow Six. It was like, if we can stop with these overtime matches, that'd be great. Sorry, Any. And then Siona tagged in saying, well, you've got Des, Ace, and Medics working together. It's just not going to happen. That's not how it goes. No. All right. So, good start for Lost One. Still some work to do. Stralis, with every opportunity to turn this one around here in the basement. That last round a lot more scrappy than maybe you'd anticipate given the constant scraps that we had across the top floor, the hunting up and down main stairs, for example. The site itself wasn't really a big part of that round. Felt a little bit more like a death match than anything else. Dots changing over quite late here onto the Ying as well. The operator that I love seeing because it just screams, we want to focus on execution. You've got the block to open the floor up. You've got Maya back on his go-to main of the Yana and that Ying to do all the hard work required to make sure that that site is easy to push into. Jay Nano looking for a cheeky peek out of stock door. It's a common one, so he needs to be careful. Uh, might find himself getting pre-fired, but nobody's spawned over that side, so he's likely to just burn 20 or 30 seconds there and then move away back into the map. Maya's not messing about. Uh, sorry, it's Lobin actually on the book. Just opens up, gets straight in. Uh, might come head-to-head -head with Forrest if not careful, though. Absolutely. Lobin starting to work off here from the top floor down. Hoping to find a player or two just lurking around the main stairs, but it's just simply not going to be a thing just yet. A little bit more of a passive angle being taken by the defenders here. Forrest, though, isn't too far away now. I say that actually he is holding halfway up main stairs. Puts himself into a slightly compromising position. Yet to be found out, though. No one is. Nice slow start for Lost One. Maya just holding again. That's another classic angle. Um, getting down at the bottom of the three steps there. Watching under the door. You can watch all the way towards <laughs> the agent bar. Um, it's one to take away and try at home if you haven't before. Uh, not one that I see very often anymore. Um, it used to be for the old bar and stock site. Um, you'd get people sat there on the glass watching all the way through the site. Uh, but for cutting off roamers and things like that, it's still a, a very valid position at times. So uh, maybe one that you can pick up a cheap kill on. But right now, there's no cheap kills flying around in this one. These two are battling hard against each other. Um, we've still got Lost One working on those vertical angles. They've got map control now halfway through the round and they need to start pressure in sight next of all. They have basically forced every member back downstairs. I can see four and I imagine the fifth isn't too far away out towards Moto either. Oh no, we've seen a couple of teams get us this stuck today. They've come undone with the Havana pallets trying to come through. 
Those ones sticking onto the window frame is going to sting at least a little bit. How many more pellets have we got? Eight. And impacts, we have one. So this is guaranteed to go off here for Rise. Just going to keep on rotating through these, and he should have this open in no time at all. Yep, that's the job done. Um, we've got Lorbin sat waiting in position, uh, wanting to take a chunk out of Astralis if the opportunity presents itself. We're going to have Candelas going in. Nobody following them at the minute. A uh, lot of utility being piled in there, and still Spiff is stood tall inside of blue going absolutely nowhere. Going to be shut down by Dots though as he manages to find the angle. Maybe a little bit of over aggression from Spiff there thinking that he could just stand underneath the hatch. J90 is following in to try and replace the man but the Candela is going to force him back. Great shot to take it out though. Dots manages to find Shuttle and it's all falling apart for Astralis right now. The diffuser goes down but it's not going to matter as we find ourselves 4v1 4v9 as lost one take another round and Dez they are taking one step towards winning this matchup they are 5-3 now really good round as well where all five players really were looking to come in from the same place let's have a listen to what Astralis need to get right all the rings attach on this Rooney Jaeger and Silver Slam play for the uh, challenge they got for right there. Perfect. And then after that, their next best site's probably going to be Bar of the Test because that's yeah. a good site. Yeah, they can't take it from the outside. So, yeah. probably basement. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. maybe probably. I'd, what is it? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 running, bro. I'm working on. I'm gonna take Mozzie. I'm gonna I'm freaking run around as usual. I'm gonna take Mozzie. I'm gonna run around as usual. But it sounds like a lot of the issue was okay. What site do we go to now? Mm. We've tried twice and it hasn't really worked out. Where do we play? And it sounded like a repeat on Church Arsenal with a couple of changes with the game plan and then potentially bar and stage to follow afterwards. Forrest himself saying, I'm going to get a mozzie and just run around and do what I normally do. Yeah, you do you, buddy. You do you. The thing is, normally it hasn't been working so far. That's the issue. Um, Forrest has been getting really sort of handed in the uh, in the entry. Um, it's not been fantastic for him so far. And really, if anything, he needs to be changing something up. Um, we'll see how it goes this round. Hopefully he can turn it round. Hopefully he can have one of those big moments um, that we know him so well for. Um, but only four kills to his name inside of eight rounds. Um, that's a kill every other round and none of those have come on the entry. Um, definitely definitely a need for change but in church and arsenal it looks like now astralis are going to uh spread themselves out over the map we saw this previously they did um try to hold on to top floor a little bit but lost one did a very good job of forcing them back to side i know we're sat at five and three but there's only one positive player on astralis and only one negative player on the side of lost one in jane i know and maya respectively this goes to show really how the firepower has been in the favor of lost one so far part of that no doubt coming down to the fact that Lobin was four and zero on entry while Forrest was zero and four. If things don't work out here, though, Tim, if they're down six and three, I think at that point it's time to say goodnight, which is why round nine can be so pivotal. It either gives you a three round in a row hill to climb, or it pulls you back within one. It comes back within touching distance of keeping up with the team you're against. What a shot from Forrest. I mean, to be fair, what he normally does, get on Mozzie and run around, it's working. I'll give him that. There we go, Forrest. That's exactly what he needed. I hoped for it, and he delivered. He's shown some real patience on that stock door, just waiting for that moment, that opportunity, and he was ready to pounce and gets the entry that he's been missing so much so far. Maya going to send up the Gemini decoy just to see what's going on on this top floor. Going to be going in. Will run out of juice. Jin, I know, manages to take down. Oh, and Forrest. look at this. It's been transformatory for Forrest as he manages to get himself a second, and he's immediately getting himself back into the game, Des. I love how the coach has stepped in and said so much, and then Forrest has been like, I'll run around and do my own thing, and he's killed two people. He's basically won the round for his team. Jane know also putting on an assist here, giving them two rounds back. I am curious to see where we go to next, if Baron Stage will be that site. But Loban has got it all to do against five players on Astralis. A good turnaround here. 
1 minute 20 left on the clock so he's certainly got time on his side he may well take 30 40 seconds of that just to see if anybody wants to stick their head out and give him a cheap kill um, you know just start bringing the numbers back in his favour just bait them out a little bit try and get somebody to come and have a look um, but I'll be honest from Astralis's point of view given um, how they've been punished over the last couple of rounds I don't think they're likely to do that they know exactly what the deal is you can see they are shutting up shop they're just going to put out those Kiba barricades get themselves into positions inside a site and they're going to sit and wait this out they have no problem doing this all day I think we've lost one it's a chance for them to have a chat here about what needs to be done next too right they know realistically for Lobin to pull this off it's going to require some magic he's so got to get up nice and close He's not going to be able to blow his way through Keeper Barriers all day long. They know he's coming from blue as well. This one is basically done. The Gon Six at least helping temporarily, but it's got to still find his way through all these players. So I imagine for now they're already thinking a little bit about that next round. Do they know the bar on stage may well be the site that's waiting for them though? Manages to get one, but they know exactly where he's coming from. It's going to be Spiff that is the uh, unfortunate victim there. But Lobin, he's going to have to continue pushing in. He's got smoke canisters to go through. He's low health, um, and it's unlikely that he finds any more. Seven seconds left to go. He's just going to watch this one tick by, I would imagine. Um, he's had his little bit of stat padding. He's had his extra kill, and that's going to be the round. And Astralis bring it back to 4-5 with a, a great defensive round. They're quite response because they know that there's a lot of work to do here. Again, this next next site will be the interesting for one for me and the telling thing because they've got to rotate really here through two sites that they wouldn't prefer to go to if they're going to keep themselves in this game. Because at this point, they've now won the downstairs. They cannot play there again for another two rounds. You can do a little bit of basic math up there at the top. If Lost 1 win two rounds, this game is over and done. If they win even one, overtime at the very minimum is guaranteed. Attackers need to I hate that you're nearly right, by the way, I think this is getting close to a 40 round game. Uh, we need it to go to 14 if we want 40. Um, it'll have to go to overtime. As soon as it goes to overtime, we're guaranteed 40, because obviously it has to be 8-6 at least. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, at that point, we are guaranteed it. But uh, the next three oh, rounds dude. will decide our fate, Des. Um, but I think we're probably, at this point, I would be safe in saying guaranteed at least 37 or 38 here. It's going to um, go very close to 12 rounds, if not all the way to 12. Well, my eyes can't help but fall on that little pick coming in from Dots here on the Monty. This is a real throwback to old school. You try and get it well. done. I've said this before. Five you want to get yourself catwalk, you send in a Monty. The difficulty you now have as Monty trying to push in through here is the Keeper Barricades do impede your path, right? You've got to be able to break them down. Either someone's got to do it for you at range or you need to drop your shield and bash your way through. So that's a big impediment towards the Monty they need to be aware of. Really it depends as well whether or not Astralis get the reading, it, whether or not Spiff is in a good place. And he has already deployed all of these out. So it doesn't have like a, a fast reaction to this coming in. So for Lost One, I'll just go and play it the standard way. You've got to deal with the bandit tricks coming out, no doubt as well. You've got the Thatcher on side to help at least somewhat, but that's not going to help you. Mainly you want to be getting in below down there is the Goya waiting for a jump out. Is Forrest going to give his life away here to the Claymore? Not yet, but he's thinking soon. about it. He's definitely thinking about it. He's thinking about cheeky C4 over the top. There he goes. Oh, he got it. No, no way. way. Wow, okay. Oh, that's a shame. I'll give it to him. That's a really he didn't good deserve defense. that. I'm going to say for he didn't for deserve Forrest. it. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this. He didn't deserve it. That was fantastic gun speed from Forrest going out there. You don't know exactly where that Claymore is going to be placed. Um, and he showed some great gun skill there to be able to take it down. Obviously, he didn't have the time to, to launch the C4 that he wanted. Um, had the Claymore not been there, that would have been his course of action. But uh, Lobin able to punish him. And it is a good start for Lost One. And it just gives them one step closer to that series point opportunity. Here at this point, they've got the main bit they want on the East Breach, and you can see Dots is gagging to get inside a garage and start the march forwards. Shuttle's in a spot where he's going to shoot you off the wall here. You can, of course, leave it on there these days and stack it up, but they'll deny away the single wall. There are no exothermics left. There are no ace charges. Now the real challenge is going to come in for uh, Lost One as to whether or not they rotate off and try something different here. Surely not. I was going to say, surely not through the tiniest little crack in the corner, but no, no Monty kill to be found. That is, I think, what um, Dots was particularly concerned about because he is on his own here. He's not really got any support, but look at what's happened inside of the breach. Everybody's rushed in. Maya gets kills. Dots clears out the garage catwalk. It's working for Lost One, Des. They're going to get that diffuser down. It's a one versus four as Iconic tries to make his way back towards site. He's coming up through Master, but Dash is watching. Dash is going to get himself taken out, but now they know where he's coming from. And the bigger problem that he's got is a diffuser down with a Monty on 
inside and visible to the outside as well. He can literally park himself in front of this doorway here and look to cause a little bit of bother. Still backing away to try and bait him into range of his teammates, mind you, to get himself a good shot off. Starting a defuse bait, sees the Monty as well, goes for the kill, but can't quite find him. It's going to be from Catwalk. Lost one, move up to match and series points. This is it, Astralis. It is now or never. It's, it's not catastrophic in tournament terms. They've won their games and they're going to be able to, to go through at least. I think that much is, is confirmed. Uh, this um, was a crazy one where no one was qualified at the start of this game. I think now Cyclops have lost. I think it's, I think it's done for Cyclops because yeah, they don't have any more games to play, play tomorrow. So exactly. the remaining four are going to go through in one fashion or another. But obviously it's just what fashion that is going to be. Um, and Astralis are going to want to be as high up that table as they can. They've guaranteed themselves a point at least by getting a map. If they lose 2-1, they will still pick up a point. But yeah. that won't be good enough for them. They want the three points. They want the two-map win. And there's no more mistakes. And Des, with no more mistakes, they've gone to bar and stage. Woohoo! I mean, that's a place to go. They feel a little bit out of options here. As I said, the problem is if you lost that last round... You're still going through your offsite. You're not able to go back down into the basement. You need to wait two rounds before you can go back there and give it another bash. So here they're forced to play at a slightly less optimal site. What I am excited about if this goes the way of Lost One, though, Tim, is it sets us up really well for a fun game between Oxygen and Lost One tomorrow. Oh, yes. The winner of that game would likely finish in first place. There's a world where I think they can still be jumped over slightly here. Hmm... No, they can't. Someone, one of those two teams will have to finish in first place. So that'll be a great game first thing tomorrow morning. I think they've got reasonably contrasting styles as well. Um, and I think it will be a, a very interesting inter-regional matchup. Uh, will that one? I'll just check Wikipedia. We're down at the castles for that game already. Are we doing that game tomorrow? How do they know? Um, I've, I think I've once or twice said what our schedule is going to be, um, so I guess it could have been found. To be fair, I did tweet it earlier, so that yeah. definitely... Someone's just being really attentive. Oh, they're oh, on what? it. Whoever's they're done that, it. we are doing lost... Oh, lost one tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we've got the game. Okay. We've they've got do. lost one. Almost we march. Right, last one. They've got to get this one done. Um, it is going to be bar and stage. They're going to have to take top floor control. We saw the power of the hatch in a game earlier. Yeah, we do have that game. Um, Amazing. It wasn't one that we cast, I don't think. I, it's, no, it wasn't. It was one that I was watching first thing this morning. It was the Sonics game, actually. I think I, I apologize if I'm wrong in saying that. Um, Sonics Eminem, we saw the power of that hatch. With It was, yeah, Eminem were trying to get a plant down on the stage, um, and Sonics just absolutely decimated them from the hatch above because they hadn't taken construction control. Um, so Lost One certainly need to make sure that they've got in and got control of that. Depending on their plant spot, if they're not looking for stage, it's not quite as important. Many great moments have happened at big events on this exact site, Tim. Look back to the Berlin Major Final. This is where it all ended. It is. In Rogue versus FaZe. Not quite the same two teams matching up here today. But a similar outcome, again, which team really gets to fight for that first place spot and get a bye into the second round of the upper bracket next week. Iconic at least saying right now it shouldn't be lost one. It's Myers the first to go down, almost being traded out. And Dash taking a spray through, trying to see what he can do. Pistol out in hand, grenade also here as well. Getting swung on as Iconic gets a second kill. What a great start to the round from him. That is absolutely unreal from Iconic there. Low health, managing to get absolutely maximum yardage out of his life that he had oh, left. Dude. It was brilliant double. J901 to rise and it's all falling apart for lost one bar and stage to the rescue. Here. It is. Iconic and, um, sorry, Astralis have still got that top floor locked down. It's going to be very difficult for Lost One to do anything. They know where the plant's coming in because they've got a Solis, but are they going to be able to stop it? He can't quite yes, see him. Can. There he goes. Just gets the angle. And Astralis, they take us to the 12th round as our 38th of this series. Astralis, Tim. Astralis. Great round coming out, and again, the Solus on the vertical really coming in big. Did the job. Did the job. Absolutely. Since I'd like to know how many um, plant denials, uh, it's maybe a stat I should have kept along the way, how many plant denials we've seen by Solus using the gadget um, so far at SI's. We've seen three and or That's four. what I mean in our um, games. You know, yeah. so I'm sure that there's more out there as well. Um, and I've got to say, you know, you look at the comparator obviously being Pulse, uh, being able to do the same job, and you certainly don't see anywhere near as many, I wouldn't say. Not as regular. No, no, no. No, um, way, no way. So Sol is proving to be very, very good on the denial of those diffuser plants.
So, Astralis have done the hard part there. They've won round 11 on an offsite and now get to go back downstairs into Church and Arsenal. Now, last one, no, they're coming into one of the stronger sites here for Astralis. They've already looked pretty comfortable there before. They're going to have to find something special to get their way through. And clearly right now, part of their worry with that Jackal pick coming in is the Romans themselves. How do they get them back to site? How do they leave themselves with enough time to pull off and execute? No Ying on site, which was doing a little bit of work for them last time. So I imagine here leaning more in towards the smoke grenades that are going to be coming out of dash on that Jackal. He'll be a big part of this round. He needs to be staying alive. Yeah, the first couple of kills are going to be particularly important. So keep your eyes on those. Um, Astralis not throwing themselves at any windows or any peaks or anything else um, but we've got quick progress there with the ITA just opening up the garage wall they want to get this top floor cleared quickly to loss one um, Dash is going to move away to the top of the garage and we're going to have Maya just um, looking to get in quickly maybe once this breach is opened the breach is open. straight in here surely not we're on a peek on towards the catwalk as well right idea because Jane I know is there waiting and ready to be the initial entry point for these players they're greeting. Big battle, this. I say, surely don't try and vault over here and go for a fight. No, getting pushed in, though, and here we go. Maya's gone down. It will be a trade coming through, but it still stings to lose Juliana. Maya having a real bad map here at 3 and 10 as well. Uncharacteristic. That's not the end of the world for Astralis. We're going to see um, Forrest and Spiff getting, them back to set, getting themselves back to site now. A minute has been wasted, maybe not as long as you might like, but a life has been taken along with it. The Maya could be a bit of a loss. Um, of course, those magnets going along with him, so not going to have as much denial down in sight as they might like for those thrown utility items but um, right now Forrest he's going to pre-place a C4 I think there's a cam up there that's just going to support that that's why there was a yellow ping so he puts it on there somebody watches the cam most like a J90 um, although he's not on there at the minute um, but if that information gets fed in that somebody steps into kitchen you pull the trigger and bang you've got yourself a freebie may have a mozzie press up there I know he's got one capture I think there is a mozzie drone in there there. there is a massive drop. Just not being watched by the right player, apparently. Because <laughs> right now, Jane I know instead is sat watching his warden. But I'm sure that will change or flick through it over time, or maybe it's a visual bug. I don't know. But they've got that information there at the very least. There's the C4 coming out, but it fell off the ceiling roof, fell down to the floor, and has already been pulled. They're going to start the process of opening the hatch. Likely to be successful first time. I don't think there's going to be um, anything done about that. There's no impact tricks in hand. There's no nitros left. Um, so there's not too much that can really be done there. So the hatch will be open good progress by lost one but the big factor that i'm looking at at the minute is that time 40 seconds left to go we often see last minute pushers coming in here uh -oh. now then dots manages to find forest takes a lot of damage along the way but it gives an advantage to lost one 30 seconds left to go and in church and arsenal times that is a long time the thing is i was going to say 4v3 is far from a massive advantage iconic gets one back but instantly responded to by dash who pulls it to 3v2 15 seconds to go and astralis have got themselves geared up towards the east side of things here as well just waiting to see where lost one come in they're pushing forward dash is in and looking for kills they found one as well just one left remaining iconic finds one can't find the next lost one will take the win they give themselves a golden chance against oxygen to fight for first place tomorrow what a game we've just seen between these two neither of them have left anything there they have given absolutely everything to that matchup you can see what it means to lost one the celebrations are loud and